Hello and welcome to Shades in Justice podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Evelyn Hill, and we are so excited you decided to stop by on today. You can always reach me at www.drevelynheal.net. Well, we've got a wonderful, wonderful lineup on tonight. We have one of Kansas City's finest, the one and only uh, Miss Chanel Dupree. And um, I'm going to um, uh, kind of quiet myself down here. I'm super excited she's with us on today, but I'm going to let her share uh, a little bit about uh, what she does here in Wyandotte County, uh, Kansas City, Kansas now. And then we have a var variety of other things we're going to be talking about as she introduces herself. Miss Chanel Dupree. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hill. And just thank you for the opportunity to share space with you. Um, I always enjoy our conversations. I'm, uh, as you stated, Chanel Dupree, and I would define myself as a connector. And um, however, the string that connects my entire life is my faith. And so that is the basis upon which I I operate and I do things. I'm currently the regional director for the Kansas Department for Children and Families. And we cover um, Wyandotte, Atchison, Lovemore, Douglas, and Johnson counties. And um, I'm also the executive director for the Racial Equity Collaborative, which works to bring people together to really address why black and brown children are in the foster care system at a disproportionately higher rate. Um, and my husband and I are in ministry here in Wyandotte County, and um, he is the pastor at a church uh, in our in our community. And so we are raising our four children here and doing all the things that parents do <laughs> and uh, rearranging schedules and just showing up and, and, and all the things. But it's a pleasure to be here today. Well... The pleasure is really all mine, and thank you for taking time out of your super busy schedule to be with us on this evening. And um, I, I just want to get right into uh, some of uh, the things that we discussed uh, that you might be sharing on this evening. First of all, just how uh, were you... Uh, selected or appointed to your position as regional director? Yeah, so I will share that, but what I will also share is that my journey, my career journey has been full of um, interesting moments. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I I was uh, I graduated law school and I had I used to put on my resume I'm 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 full of passion like I was so I was ready I wanted to just help I wanted to dive in there but I had no experience and um, it was during the Great Recession so when I graduated law school people weren't hiring new lawyers they wanted a sure bet they wanted people who had kind of been in the industry and the work that I wanted to do I knew I wanted to work in social services and family law, um, that those sectors just weren't hiring at all. And so mm -hmm. I had to I had to pivot. I had to do things that um, I didn't necessarily want to do, but I needed to work and um, just use my brain. I, you know, for a day I said, you know what, I'm just not going to work. I'm going to stop. And I went and I found that I really like shopping. And so I discovered at the end of the day, I need a job. Okay. <laughs> I can't I can't just not go to work. <laughs> so that lasted a day. <laughs> uh -huh. But uh so so it's been it's been filled with um with with many different experiences. I started uh with the state actually um it, as my kind of official grown-up job, um the Kansas Health Policy Authority. And I was with them for a little over two and a half years and uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced like finding out that you would no longer have a job in a very public way, but 
but I was watching the state of the uh, state address and our governor at that time was giving the state of the state. And he said, and we're going to be abolishing an agency. And he named the agency that I was working at. And so that's how I found out that the agency that I was working at was no longer going to be in existence. <laughs> wow. Oh, my. So uh, I needed to make a career change. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but was very happy with the work that we did. We helped to create the um, uh, help. Uh, there were many organizations, but was a primary uh, proponent of um, the statewide smoking ban and, mm -hmm. and things of that sort. And so went into, I started working with my law school as a diversity professional. Um, so doing uh, that type of work. And then um, ultimately, I really wanted to be in the courtroom and work with families. And so I just kind of launched out there, opened up my own law practice, had no idea what I was doing, um, but took it one step at a time. Didn't even know where to stand in court. It was it was something. But uh, I I took one case and I did really well on each case. And so um, it just grew and God just blessed it and breathed on it. And, um, I, you know, I started with one and ended with hundreds of cases when I ultimately stepped away, you know, nine years later. And then my husband was elected as the first dis uh, first African-American district attorney in Wyandotte County. And we had four small children and I needed to not be in the courtroom as often as I was. I needed to be more available for our, for our children. And so I didn't know what I was going to do, but I decided that I still wanted to talk about child welfare. And so I started interviewing um, people around the state. And one of those interviews was our now governor, uh, Laura Kelly. And uh, we sat down and just had a, a really great conversation for an hour and uh, at the end of the interview, she said, I, I, I think I'm going to be seeing you. And I said, OK. Now, she wasn't the <laughs> governor yet. She was running um, for office uh -huh. and she ultimately won. And then I was asked to be a part of her transition team. And then a couple months later, I was offered the position. So that's how I came into my role as the regional director of the Kansas City Oh, region. my. That's phenomenal. I think. Uh, one of the themes that you mentioned regularly during our conversation already this evening is you don't mind stepping out on faith. You said you stepped out there not knowing what you were going to do. You didn't even know where to stand in the courtroom, but uh, that's, uh, that's pretty uh, amazing that you have that kind of a faith walk uh, because oftentimes people want everything just handed to them on a silver platter without yeah. doing any kind of stepping out on faith at all. And so to hear you just just jump out there uh, is pretty, pretty uh, amazing. So thank you for sharing that. And evidently that conversation you had with the now governor. Uh, <laughs> it, it went well. It was a, it was a pretty powerful, <laughs> I needed to get a fly on the wall or something so I could yeah. have heard that. Yeah, that was that was remarkable also. So thank you for sharing that. And now let's mm -hmm. let's get into uh, your role there. Uh, kind of uh, what are you doing? Uh, I know you're the executive director over the racial and equity piece. Um, and how does that um, uh, work? How has that affected what you do regionally? Uh, and then we'll just go from there. Yeah, so um, my role at the Kansas Department for Children and Families is, I would kind of describe it as like a hospital administrator. Um, I accept it's social services. Um, yeah. And it's not just child welfare, it's adult protection services, it's vocational rehabilitation services, it's um, food assistance, it's cash assistance, it's all of those things. And so there's a lot of federal programs um, that we're responsible for. And there's a lot of communication that has to happen. Our region has about um, over 500 employees. And so I am responsible for ensuring that all these programs and practices are implemented. Um, something that has happened in since 2019, since uh, Governor Kelly took office, is there has been a concentrated approach on prevention. Like, how can we help families before they get to a point of 
like mm-hmm. extreme crisis. And right. so right. there was federal funding that came down that that really helped with that. But, you know, you can have the money, but if you don't have the implementation, if you don't have the buy in, mm-hmm. like you can't just tell people, OK, change what you've been doing for 20 years. It right. like it's a whole process. Mm-hmm. And so. Yeah. Um, through that process, though, we've implemented the Kansas practice model, which really changes how we work with families. We've been able to reduce the number of children in care to like record level lows. So Mm -hmm. now it's um, at about 5,999 children, whereas, you know, uh, in 2018, 2017, 2016, we were teetering at, you know, seven, 8,000 kids in care. And mm-hmm. so the number of reduction has been amazing um, mm-hmm. and we're, we're safely keeping families together. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was in the courtroom, I felt that families of color had worse outcomes. Um, mm-hmm. But then when I actually got into the agency, I saw the data. And what mm-hmm. the data shows is that children of color, specifically Black children, Native children, um, not necessarily Hispanic children in Kansas, um, but definitely like in Texas and in California. Um, but uh, those children um, are, you know, going into care at a higher rate than they're in the population. Um, they're staying in care longer. They move more often. Um, they're aging out of the foster care system, which has its own negative impacts. Children who age out without connections are more likely to end up incarcerated, uh, early pregnancy, um, you know, all of the homeless, like all of the outcomes Mm -hmm. that we don't want. That's usually what happens to children who age out without connections because connections Mm -hmm. are everything. Um, So uh, it was through a coffee conversation with a friend in 2021. And we were just like, what can we do? And I had already been, I've been having the conversation regarding like racial disparities and, and inequities, but there wasn't like a statewide conversation committed to discussing it regarding social services. And so Mm -hmm. we, um, she was with uh, Care Portal, which is a faith-based organization Mm -hmm. um, that provides uh, care um, resources for uh, children and parents. And uh, we also connected with the University of Kansas. And ultimately we started having these online learning lectures and Mm -hmm. a symposium and it just grew and We've now touched, you know, over three, four, five thousand individuals um, who have been a part of the journey. We have in-person symposiums. We bring in, you know, national speakers. We present about poverty, neglect, all these different things. And it just came to a point where it made sense to make it its own nonprofit, 501c3. And so that's that's new. So that happened this year. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And so I was asked to fill the role of executive director. And right now I'm coexisting as regional director for the Kansas Department for Children and Families. The agency is supportive and also the executive director for the Racial Equity Collaborative. So that's what's happening right now. (laughs) So what you're saying is you really need a clone. That's what you're saying. And you need about three or four of them. You need one for the family, one for the church, one for the state. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) So you need at least four of you. Well, hey, I want you to know uh, uh, we definitely applaud you for uh, the work that you do. the passion is evident uh, for someone to take on that role. Uh, the regional role uh, sounds, uh, for lack of a better word, like it's sexy, it's all that in a bag of chips, but in reality, it's hard work. And how do you get all those systems connected where they really do impact and help families with wraparound services available in the community. So I understand it's not as cute as it sounds. No, and, then the, yeah, <laughs> and then the executive director role, um, as you um, uh, cross into communities across the country, because I've been to several of the symposiums online Oh my gosh. And the information I finally made myself delete. I took pictures of all the PowerPoints and everything. I'm going, <laughs> Evelyn, you don't have that kind of memory on your phone. But the, the information was just 
incredible. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. And the last symposium, I think, that you had here in KCK was at the community college. It was. And um, that's where I, I really learned a lot. I was so impressed. You had an individual from uh, D.C. who I think was a part of Biden, President Biden's uh, staff. Am I yes, correct? That is correct. Associate Commissioner Schomburg. So she's the yes. director. She's the lead for the Children's Bureau. So yes. Incredible because uh, we don't often hear of individuals coming to our part of the uh, I'll, I'll say our part of the city. We, we have a big metro area but to yeah. come into Wyandotte County, that was huge to me. And, uh, but it didn't stop there. You had several representatives from the state uh, and all of them had really good information. They really challenged us uh, to think differently. Uh, we always think about somebody else doing uh, the work instead of we ourselves accepting some of the kids and training um, and housing some of the kids ourselves. So it was it was it was an incredible time for me and a great opportunity to learn. So thank you for that. Um, so another thing I wanted to ask you is um, uh, when you started this work with the strong focus on racial and equity disparities in foster care system, uh, what were some of your main challenges? Was it that systems approach that was hard? Uh, I don't know. What, what were some of your challenges? Well, I think that it was kind of an internal challenge. Like it was okay. a, it was a, are you really about to dive into this? Because this work can be very, um, what is the word? It's just, it can be a lot uh, okay. because it sometimes you don't see the change. Like it's mm -hmm. not rapid change. It's very right. incremental change. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you have to find ways to celebrate the successes mm -hmm. or you'll get discouraged. And so yes. it was, you know, how do I, how can I not just do the work, but bring people along in this journey? Mm -hmm. Because I can't mm -hmm. do it by myself. Right. And that right. was the, that was the thing for me. Like, if this is going to be work that only Chanel is going to be doing, it's not going to happen. Like, I need, we need to be doing this together. That's why organizations that hire, you know, a DEI officer and just expect for that one person to change an entire organization, they're right. setting them up for failure. Exactly. It doesn't work yes. like that. And they're setting them right. up to be burnt out um, because mm -hmm. they don't have that support. And so, you know, DEI efforts have to be integrated into the policy, into the procedures, into the practices, into the questions that are asked on a very consistent basis. And so, like, once I decided that I was going to use the position that I had to advocate for that change, mm -hmm. um, then it was like, okay, let's go. Um, but it was, mm -hmm. it was a, it was a decision, like a conscious, de conscientious decision that had to be made. Yeah. Wow. So um, that is uh, amazing. And, and the reason I, I asked about that is that I knew it was it, it, it was not easy. Then it's still not easy. And how have you weathered that storm? Uh, and you partially answered that. It's because it's not just about you. Uh, sy systemic changes are tough. People fight to hold on to systems that don't work. Yes. And so when Andrew, who are you? You you're this little young whippersnapper coming in telling us to change the system. No. Yeah. So we're gonna fight against you, make sure we do everything we can to make you uncomfortable, to make you quit. Yeah. But I'm grateful for the sake of the kids in our state that you continue the work. I will say that um, my agency, uh, so DCF and especially my direct supervisor and then the secretary have been so supportive. Um, and mm -hmm. that has, I think that's allowed us to go further faster um, mm -hmm. just with that support. And so 
because of that kind of it's coming from leadership that this is how we're moving this is how we're this is how we're functioning even if folks don't want to move there's an expectation <laughs> that people are going to engage in this conversation. And so that is happening. So mm -hmm. that's good uh, and you don't hog the show. And what I mean by that is I watched in the meetings that I've been in, and especially when you had the conference here at the college, you could have done um, a whole lot more to promote yourself, to, do most of the program yourself, but you didn't. You shared it with your staff. You shared it with folks uh, around the country. Um, and then you encouraged the audience to get involved. So I really applaud you for that. And, and you don't have to pay me anything for keeping, <laughs> continuing to applaud you, but I just want you to know, I've seen other uh, executive directors, regional directors, uh, in positions uh, that are not near as um, engaging as far as teamwork. Um, you seem to thrive with uh, encouraging others to come on board versus hogging the show just for yourself. So uh, that was exciting to me also. And um, so to me, it's, it's, it's really necessary. Um, like well, you that's said, how the work, uh, yeah, it's how the work lives yeah. on. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. So I know you don't, you don't have, you don't have to send a check today. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. <laughs> so another thing I wanted to talk about, what were some of the key hindrances that you ran across as you have built this work? You've been doing this work now for uh, how long? So are we talking about just working with families or, <laughs> um, cause that, that's, that's coming up on some decades, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> well, my the, role the, within the, DCF has yes, been five years. Yes. 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 Five years. Five, five years. years. Okay. Yeah. So what have been some of the hindrances? Well, um, I think that I was I was I was kind of an outsider coming in. So although I had worked for the state, it was very early in my career, and um, I spent you know a decade in the courtroom as an attorney, and now I'm in this role where I'm not functioning as an attorney, um, and I'm working in social services. And typically, the dynamic in child welfare is there's not like a there's not necessarily a collegial relationship between the lawyers and the the workers who are doing the case. Mm -hmm. And so now that wasn't necessarily my case because I, I understood their role, but a mm -hmm. lot of people who are working in the system don't understand one another's role. And so then what mm -hmm. happens is they demonize the other person mm -hmm. um, for what they're doing. And so um, for me, it was, kind of coming in, having practiced by myself along with my husband, but, you know, us practicing now, it's an organization with over 500 people that I'm responsible for managing and listening to and being responsive to. I mean, that was, uh, that was, you know, so that was external and internal. I'm an outsider. I'm coming in. I have these ideas. Um, yes. I have a different kind of philosophy and way that I, I work with people. Um, I'm not doing the whole, um, you know, there was a lot of kind of uh, people not trusting that they could really share what they were really thinking mm -hmm. and that they would be retaliated against. Right. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm going to be clear and honest with you. There's not going to be like the underhanded, just, you know, what's working, what's not working, um, you know, all the things. And so it was building that trust that, uh -huh. that I am going to do what I say I'm going to do. I, you get what you get. And um, I really do want to hear your thoughts. And that's uh -huh. going to be a part of like how I manage. So uh -huh. I think that that was kind of the the biggest transition that I had um, coming into like social services and management. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things I've noticed uh, 
just over the years is that we often have to recreate ourselves over and over again. You know, you mentioned uh, you realized you like shopping, so you had to you had to work, and you went from being uh, an attorney, and now you're not an attorney, but you work with the attorneys, and mm -hmm. so over and over again, we find ourselves. Uh, we have to recreate and rebuild and but uh the the good thing is um uh, that we have the lord who really helps us along the way and yeah. gives us the strength uh to be able to make those transitions and to make them uh successfully uh, yeah but yeah. i will say you know it's it's i you know i love that you called that out um but it was hard. Like I was, I was so used to, like, I identified as being a lawyer. Like that's yes. what I had done. That's what I went to school for. That's what I enjoyed doing. So when I needed to do something different, I remember it was such a struggle and um, I didn't know like where I fit. And mm -hmm. so um, I remember, you know, having a conversation with God, I was frustrated. I'm like, it feels like I built this from yes. nothing and now I have to start over again and I told God I said I'm I'm tired of having to create it <laughs> I remember that conversation and he said you know who are you like are you are you if you're not a lawyer right is is that is that will you still serve me right if, mm -hmm. if this isn't the, the path that I I'm going to have you on are you going to be okay and mm -hmm. I had to just say you know what Lord not my will, but your will be done. <laughs> like that's how we have our conversations at times. And 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 then, you know, just to look back, I'm so glad that that transition happened. I'm so glad that I'm in the space that I'm in. I'm so glad that I'm kind of rediscovering other strengths um, and, and that I decided that my identity is not a lawyer. That's something that I've done um that I that I do but that's not who I am that's not mm -hmm. who God created me to be so mm -hmm. that, that is awesome and I think this conversation should help a lot of women especially who find themselves uh starting over and don't really want to start over when do you just get to relax and sip tea <laughs> and just you know put your go, go up. shopping yes. <laughs> <laughs> why am i recreating myself again yeah. so yeah i love that fact that you were able to talk to the lord and say i really don't want to do this but nevertheless <laughs> not my will yours be done so that is it's so relevant. And, uh, you know, the job market is changing, even how we communicate. Uh, it used to be you could always count on folks to email you or email you back, not necessarily e anymore. You could always depend on folks returning your call, not necessarily anymore. And now even text, you may not hear from folks even coming back with text. So, if you go and apply for a job, you may hear from that agency. You may not. And yeah. they, you don't answer phone. They don't do tests. It's, yep. it's tough. It is really tough. So you have to be able to sit and wait on them or go out and, and find another way. So oh, yeah. I appreciate oh, yeah. you sharing that. Absolutely. I really appreciate you sharing that. And so I believe more people are transitioning than um what we know about and mm -hmm. just to know that uh we can depend on the grace of God to help us through it 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 means a lot so here is one of my last questions um mm -hmm. what are you doing for 2024 as you move forward what what's some of your planning for moving forward and then the second part to that is what can we do here in the community to help you and your organizations i'm putting the s on it <laughs> <laughs> right um well so you know for 2024 um you know i i mentioned earlier my husband and i are um a part of our our ministry grace tabernacle and so um that's just an, an important piece in our life and so that's something that 
you know, just building the ministry and just continuing to, you know, I feel like that's our ground level work. Like that's where we're, you don't see it, but it's where we're working with, with families. We're encouraging families. We're sharing God's word. We're walking with families through loss, through, you know, joyous times, through, through all of those things and just building a community of faith. And so, and so the, the church is always something that is, is will always be important in our lives. Um, regarding the racial equity collaborative, we were recently awarded a um, a grant, a federal grant, as a sub awardee, um, and it's the first of its kind. Um, uh, the the Children's Bureau issued a grant, um, uh, put a call out, and there were eight organizations selected across the nation, and we're a sub awardee under the University of Kansas, um, but it's addressing racial disparities in child welfare. And so it's exactly wow. the what we've been yeah. talking about. Yeah. So, you know, what people can expect is you're going to be hearing more about that federal grant. Yes. We want to bring in organizations. We want to bring in people who have lived expertise, who have been a part of the child welfare system, um, specifically black and brown families. Um mm-hmm. Uh, youth who have been a part of the system um, because this grant is different in that that's how it's going to be built. That's how our priorities and how we're going to kind of implement change. We need to hear the voices of the people who have been directly impacted. And so that will be the major focus into 2024. It's called Kansas Brave. um, And we're Mm -hmm. bravely uh, bravely activating voices or something. I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> so, like it. Very, I like it. Yeah, very excited, very excited uh, for that. And, you know, just with the department, we're just um, just really focused on, you know, staff safety, employee morale, um, having a stable workforce. Um, that's a thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's important for the services that we're providing that people would receive like a continuity of care. And so there's just many facets and many things that go into what we do. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to to do what I love to do. Mm-hmm. Well, um, this has been um, incredible. Uh, podcast, radio show, uh, because seldom um, do I have folks on here that um, have had a conversation with the governor before they were governors, (laughs) stuff like that. I just, (laughs) so this this is pretty amazing. I, I also want to make a couple of comments. Number one, I visited you all's church. I absolutely love it. The word of God is is solid. That comes from both you and your husband and also um, uh, the uh, love and to be able to feel the spirit of the Lord in the place is it's amazing. Uh, the praise and worship is good. The word is good. It is just, I, I call you all the dynamic duel. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I see you all working together in such a phenomenal way. And uh, where you could get the big head, uh, I think the church just kind of levels levels uh, oh, yeah. things out to where you're able to be, you know, at ground level with individuals right here in the community. So I wanted to just comment on that. And I want to say congratulations on receiving that grant. That's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, okay, hold on. I have the name, Bravely Raising and Activating Voices for Equity. Brave. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Okay, go ahead. That's Sorry, it. I just had to redeem right. myself. <laughs> yes, yes. So, and that sounds like something you would do because you're brave and you're courageous. So uh, that sounds like the type of grant. I see why you're excited now. It's like your name is all over that one. Oh, so goodness. I can see that. Well, this has been an amazing interview and thank you so much for your time today. Um, And uh, we are looking forward to working with you in uh, 2024 and um, anything that we can do to help, please let us know because we we want to be proactive as we move forward. As you know, I'm in a period right now of beginning a new transition myself. And so, Congratulations. thank you. Congratulations. And we, 
Ooh, so we will <laughs> we will say like you. We appreciate the Lord for bringing us to this space, and we just trust Him all the way. We just yeah. trust Him. So, all right. Any? Uh, would you like to share a website or phone number, anything? If people like to reach out to your organization, you're welcome to. Uh, well, I would say just Google us. We'll have more of a presence, uh, the Racial Equity Collaborative, but that's our name, the Racial Equity Collaborative. And so you'll be able to find us online. Dr. Hill, thank you so much for having me. It's been such an extreme pleasure to chat with you today. And thank you. It's been my pleasure to to have you with us. And again, I'd like to say uh, thank you to all who have listened to us on today. This is Shades in Justice. And I'm your host, Dr. Evelyn Hill. We've talked on this evening with the one and only dynamic, brave, courageous Chanel Dupree. And okay, you all, we see you next time at Shades in Justice podcast. Bye-bye.